Hey, welcome back YouTube. This is Steve, the Idaho Fabricator. You know, this snow out here in Northern Idaho this year has been kicking my fanny. I've been plowing and snow throwing and shoveling my my fanny off and uh, finally got a break in the in the snow today. So I wanted to come on in the shop and show you what I'm doing on Sally's pickup. This is the bed here. Um, no longer has wood in the floor. Uh, she didn't like the wood. Um, she wanted something a little more durable, something that would work better for her gardening and taking care of her chickens. So uh, we're going to put metal in the floor. I got a piece of 12 gauge diamond plate steel here. It weighs, uh, let's see, what does this weigh? It weighs 160 pounds, so not much heavier than the wood would have been. So good trade off. If anything, a little more traction for the back end of the truck. And uh, so today I wanted to show you how I came, how I figured out how to put steel in here. Now normally on these beds, these cross sills here would, you know, this would be up. This, this cross sill would be down. There'd be a piece of oak, oak board underneath it, okay? And then each one of these studs that are under here, the, the wood had a, like a little U-shaped notch in it. So the wood boards would slide under here and then these cross sills would clamp the wood down and there was more like strips that went front to back that pinched the boards together so the boards you know theoretically wouldn't you know warp and cup and stuff so so what I did was I raised these cross sills all the way up and then I measured and in order to prevent the the steel from sagging in the middle I had to put an eighth inch little strip of steel on top so that when the steel lays on here, it's flat. And my plan was that the steel would, would come all the way over here and lay on top of this edge here. Normally the wood would fit down in this little groove here, okay? And uh, so, my, so when I gave him the measurements, I measured from the front right to where I wanted it to, to come here. And then I measured from side to side. And uh, just a little tip for you. You know, <laughs> I have this thing where I like to make it like really accurate when I'm measuring. And on something like this, you know, these beds, they're not perfectly straight. So allow a little bit of play, maybe an eighth of an inch in your measurement when you give it to the steel place. So when you actually get it, it'll fit rather than having to spend a whole bunch of time with a grinder grinding six foot long piece of, of steel so it'll fit in your bed. So just a little tip for you. So I put these on here, all across sills, and then down on the front here, uh, this is where the, uh, the bed end, there's holes here, and there would be a bolt that went through, through the boards that went in here. And that would keep this front from, you know, moving if you put something in here and it banged against the edge. So this is what I came up with for that. This is just a piece of three quarter inch um, square stock. And then I just welded some nut inserts here, okay? And you notice that I left them on, on top. And the reason that I did that was so that, in fact, I'll show you on the edge of this bed. So when I lay this, if we pretend like that's sitting there, you'll notice that there's an air gap all the way along. And the reason that I did that was, so when I mount this in here, okay, and bolt it down, if any water gets behind here, it can drain out. So I won't, I, you know, hope, don't have to worry about standing water, rusting out this, the end of this bed here, so. Anyway, that's that, and let me show you just real quickly. Let me get this steel lined up here. Oh, one other thing. I went to I went on eBay and I was looking for tie downs. Okay, and then nobody seems to put tie downs on older trucks, and I don't get it because you got to haul stuff and you need to tie them down. So I picked these up on eBay. I got a set of four of these, and I don't—I think they were like ten bucks, eight bucks, 
right? And they're pretty heavy steel. And they've got a place where you can put a hook or you can run, run rope around it or whatever, right? So I'm gonna mount these. There's already a hole here on both sides, so that'll be one of my holes. I'm gonna mount these on all four corners and uh, that'll give Sally a place to tie down, you know, like if she gets some plants or trees and stuff like that, keep them from falling over in the truck. So these are pretty cool. Um, I like these because um, they don't make any noise. You know, they don't rattle. They just, they're there. And um, probably put this one somewhere in here. And I'm just gonna back it up with a little plate behind here and a couple of nuts. And the nice thing is, is that because this rolls, the way this rolls down like this, even with this bolted here, you can't really see the nuts. So it'll be kind of hidden. You won't really see how it's attached. And uh, I think it's gonna work out good. I'm pretty happy with it. So I am going to um, mount that front plate on, this front bracket here, okay? I'm gonna mount this on, got the bolts here for it. And then uh, when I get back, I'm gonna slide that steel in and uh, I'm gonna show you how it looks and, and uh, talk to you a little bit about making the holes for these. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay guys, um, I got this on and uh, it's bolted on so I have a nice gap underneath there um, so water can get through. And um, all of this silver color here, I wanted to show you, this is a, this is a weld through primer. And uh, there's a lot of weld through primers out in the market. Um, but I've used this one. It has a lot of zinc in it. And um, what happens is, is that it allows me to protect this raw metal. And then, but I can still strike an arc with the MIG welder and weld the steel to these cross ribs. So my plan is, I'm gonna put the steel in and, and actually weld it to all of these cross sails all the way down. And the weld through primer is gonna protect the metal from rust. And um, I, can, I can still weld through it. On some of the cheaper weld through primers, you spray it on and you end up having to scratch away the paint in order to strike an arc. But with this product here, this works good. Um, it's a little on the spendy side, but um, anyway, this is a good product, so. And uh, they're not paying me to say that, by the way. This just works, so. Um, so that's that. So now I'm gonna slide this up in here. Pretty close. Both sides. here that uh, I have to, you have to put in beforehand on these trucks here. This is a little carriage bolt that uh, is for one of your fender braces. So if you don't put it in now, you aren't going to get it in later. Because <laughs> the steel is... time here. It really went in easy before. Alright, let's give it a big, big, big North Idaho push here. Oh. Came out. I think I'm on the right track though. So, that one there. Get this one on this side. And I do have to, just so you know, you know get you, I'm gonna show you, hopefully it'll focus for you. I had to put a little notch there with a rat tail file to clear the steel. 
And I have had it in before, so I know it fits. So. All right, here we go. Dang, I did it again. Let's see if I can get it. Get it to stay. Don't want it popping out, because... There we go. guys I think uh, that looks pretty good you know the reason that uh, I went with diamond plate is uh, well two reasons I think it looks cool kind of has an industrial look to it and um, these little uh, diamonds on here we're, I'm gonna have this uh, rhino lined and um, probably gonna go with Linex because they have a better reputation, but um, I think these little nubs and the rhino lining, it'll get more, stuff won't slide around so easy inside the bed. And uh, so I'm gonna do that. <laughs> and I did wanna touch bases a little bit. When you're drilling the holes for this thing, um, you put the steel in, you get it as close as you can get it, you get it square back here so it's nice and even, right? And then um, I went underneath and I center punched it from underneath as best I could. The problem is the holes in the cross sills, they're kind of big and so even with a half inch um, alignment punch, it kind of wiggles around a little bit. So I center punched them, pulled the metal out, flipped it over, drilled the holes, and then I drilled half inch holes. Half inch holes are what, um, these are the uh, bed mounting bolts. They're half inch carriage bolts. Um, these are grade five. And um, so the way I did it was, I wanted to share with you. I marked the holes and then I used a file and I filed them so that they would be centered in the holes. Okay, I don't know if that makes sense or whatever, but I wanted them just to drop right in, you know, like that. And it uh, looks pretty cool. I mean, you know, kind of a nice industrial look. And we got four more here for the other side. Okay. The reason I was, I, I just thought of why I was telling you that about drilling the hole. You know, what, what happens, what I've noticed is you drill a hole, okay, and um, you can see the, the, the cross seal hole underneath it. Well, you start filing with your file, and um, like, let's say the hole was like here, and you start squaring this one off, and then pretty soon your hole moves over because <laughs> you're trying to get it square, and it ends up not being in alignment with the uh, with the hole underneath. So what I did was I drilled the hole, set this on top, and then used the, a file, and I used the hole underneath as a guide so that I could keep the square centered in the in the hole. I hope I explained that good, but. Um, the bottom line is the bolts just drop right in and you will have to you will have to grind a little bit here because these diamonds you know were right in the way and that's okay you just kind of grind and smooth them out so that the head of those bolts fits and lays nice and flat okay and so um, that's it see these are held in place by the floor those are for your bed uh, your fender brackets and um, the next thing up, uh, the next plan is uh, I'm going to get underneath and I'm going to tack weld all this bed floor to all the cross sills. I'm going to have uh, Sally stand on it so everything's nice and flat. 
And uh, and I'm just gonna go along and tack weld all the way until I'm all done. And uh, then I think I'm gonna take the chain hoist. I'm gonna spin this up on its end and uh, I'm gonna paint the bottom of the bed. And uh, I've tried painting upside down. It doesn't work good. It's like, it's like raining paint. And it's really hard to get it off your glasses. And because you put a face shield on and then you can't see how that's, so you take the face shield off and then you got it's, raining paint is bad. I'm just gonna go out, cause it's gonna go online and it's just gonna go on record. That's a bad thing. So I'm gonna stand this bad boy up, paint it while I'm standing up. And then uh, as soon as it warms up a little bit, it's just way too cold to, uh, to spray paint the fenders. I got them all ready to go. This one's all ready to go. The other fender's ready to go. The tailgate's ready. Um, I'm really close. It's just like really cold outside. And um, even though I can get the temperature in here good, there's just a little too much humidity in the air and I'm just afraid it'll affect the quality of the finish. So um, I figured I'd wrap up all this kind of stuff and get it ready to go. And then uh, I'll spray those, we'll put them together. I'll show you how we do that. And uh, we'll get Sally's 87 GMC back on the road again. So that number one, she's happy. And then number two, and most important, I might add, we can get back on project transformation. I know. And uh, I've got it all, I'm getting it mocked up here. I got a piece of uh, tubing to pretend like it's a steering column so I can mark the hole in the floor. I've got a uh, bracket system I'll show you for uh, putting the master cylinder on the firewall. Uh, I think I mentioned before I was going to put the master cylinder underneath, but I really didn't like the way it just was too close to the exhaust system. I just didn't like the look of it. And uh, since I'm really into building daily drivers, things that you can have fun with, um, makes sense to put the master cylinder on the firewall. I mean, it's I'm going to have some chrome on it. It'll look nice. It'll just sit right here. It won't interfere with anything. And, um, and I'll be able to do some smoky burnouts. So um, we'll do those together, by the way. I'm saving up to get a GoPro so we can really do the GoPro smoky burnout deal. So um, anyway, guys, it's been fun. I hope that uh, you got a few ideas for maybe uh, customizing the bed on your pickup. If it had wood in it, you can do steel. Um, as you can see, it looks really nice. Um, I am, after I'm going to weld it, I am going to go along here with some uh, automotive seam sealer. I'm going to seam seal all the edges. And I am going to put a drain hole somewhere up in here, I think, so that uh, water won't collect in it. And um, it's going to be just super looking. So I'm excited. I know my wife Sally's excited. I'm surprised she can hold the camera still. She's so excited. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time in Idaho Fabricator.